Welcome to another episode of From the Field Careers Edition. My name is Brant Portner. I'm an environmental education specialist with the Game Commission. Today I'm here with Andy Weaver. He's a forester in the southeast region, and we're going to be discussing careers in forestry within the Pennsylvania Game Commission. So Andy, thank you for joining us today. We're going to go ahead and get right started. I got the first question for you. Um, first one is, how long have you been in your specific position with the Game Commission and then the field of forestry in general? All right, I've been in uh, forestry 19 years uh, and with the Game Commission for a little over 18. Okay. I had worked uh, for a paper company as a forester for a year after school before I started with the Game Commission. So. If someone's really interested, um, how did you start your interest? Was this something that you developed when you were younger as a child, or maybe when you're in high school or college, sort of developed that interest for forestry more? Well, as 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 a kid, I uh, really enjoyed you know hunting, fishing, backpacking, canoeing, yep. camping, that sort of thing, uh, anything outside, and. Uh, I really had a lot of interest in fish and that sort of thing, so I kind of explored, you know, fisheries stuff first. Uh, but at the time, uh, the job market wasn't very good at all. So uh, I also heard about forestry. Uh, one of my high school teachers had uh, pursued a degree in forestry, and, and he kind of exposed me to forestry profession. Okay. And uh, doing some research at the time, the the job market was much better. Uh, yeah. in forestry so I made the decision I'd kind of rather get a job um, still be outside you know working in the woods uh, so I decided to, to pursue forestry and as I started to take classes and, and learn more about the forestry profession I, I found out that I, that I really enjoy it. Nice I'm glad it worked out that way and not that you learned you didn't like it no. after <laughs> investing all <laughs> for that. Sure, yeah. um, so in terms of education or experience again for someone that's maybe looking to get into this field you know, I've met a lot of foresters that have varying levels of education, uh, whether it be an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, even a master's degree, um, different types of majors. So is there anything you specifically would recommend? Uh, well, um, I, would, I would recommend probably, if, unless you want to get into research, mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting a graduate degree may not be um, necessary. Okay. Uh, I think the kind of the, the sweet spot for, for me anyway is the, the bachelor's degree. Um, it's kind of a nice mix of you know higher level planning stuff and actual field work. Um, another option is if you just want to do the field work and that's all you want to do, um, the associate's degree that'll have you out in the woods all day every day. You know, uh, rain, snow, nine degrees, ninety nine degrees. Yep. But if you just really want to work in the woods. Uh, get your associate's degree and uh, go that route. But if you if you want to maybe mix it up a little bit, uh -huh. um, I think the the bachelor's degree offers a little bit more uh, variety. Yeah, makes sense to me. Um, so, as you go about your day, uh, can you sort of tell me what like a day in the life of a forester and the game commission is? Well, um, you know. As a game commission forester, what I'm charged with is managing forests for wildlife. So I work strictly on state game lands, um, and the state game land system is over 90% forested. Okay. Uh, so when we're looking at, at wildlife habitat on game lands, it's a lot of forested stuff, and um, the forester's job is to manage you know, the forest for those wildlife. So in, you're not out the there habitat. running a chainsaw all day or, or making clear cuts and everything. It's much more towards the habitat. Right, it's more towards the habitat. Okay. So yeah, I don't. I generally don't do uh, much of the, the, the actual habitat work. Most okay. of that is contracted out. So as a forester, it's kind of my job to, you know, look at the forest, evaluate the habitat value of the forest, and then how do we improve it? How do we improve that wildlife habitat? Uh, so then, you know, kind of developing projects that will improve the habitat, and then, like I said, most of the the actual work is contracted out. Uh, we pay people to do the work. So then another part of my job then is to kind of develop the contract, the paperwork, end of, end of things. And then once the work starts, to make sure the contractor's doing what they're supposed to do. Okay, so it seems like there's a lot of planning. You mentioned some paperwork and stuff. Is there like an on-off season? You know, maybe are you in the office more during the dormant season? Uh, how does that work? Uh, it, it's, it's pretty consistent throughout the year. Okay. Um, most of the work that we do, we, we can do year round. 
Um, you know, some of the contract work, they, they can only do that in, you know, the growing season or the dormant season. Right. But as far as setting up the projects, we can do that year round. So, uh, the forester's job's pretty consistent. Uh, seasonally, there's some changes. Uh, for example, I'm involved in the region's fire program, prescribed fire yeah. program. Nice. Um, and we do most of that in the springtime. So right. uh, in the spring, sometimes the days can get pretty long because you know, we want to take advantage of those good burn days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm a little bit busier in the spring. Um, but uh, And then specific to a game commission forester, uh, our, our duties change a little bit during a major, major hunting season. Okay. Uh, just because that's the time when the game lands are most utilized by hunters uh, and we try to avoid conflict with them so things slow down a little bit over you know the major hunting seasons. right yeah it makes sense you definitely don't want to be out crawling through brush like when there's a lot of hunters out in the field. right yeah yeah so do you have um more of a, a free favorite aspect or part of your job and then maybe a least favorite part of it well i kind of alluded to it before my least favorite part is the paperwork okay <laughs> uh, you know people get into forestry because you know we want to work by ourselves in the woods, uh, and when you start your career, you you know you, the lower level, you, you do more of that. You know, mm -hmm. You're in the woods almost every day, and you, you run into people, but not as much. Right. But as you get into more of the project planning stuff, you're you're dealing more with people, more contract stuff, more paperwork. Um, so I would say the the, the paperwork is probably my least favorite part. My my most favorite part is after a project's been implemented uh, and going back and, and seeing the results. Ah, okay. And, uh, you know, seeing specifically when it was successful, when the project was successful. You know, not every project's a success, but, you know, the ones that, that turned out like we planned, um, right. that's, that's pretty gratifying to see that. Yeah, I know. I like getting out there and definitely seeing where you've done some sort of habitat management and maybe beforehand there wasn't a certain species, whether it be plant or wildlife that wasn't there and yeah going out there and seeing that that species really be successful and everything yeah. as a result of all that hard work mm -hmm. and it also seems to me and correct me if i'm wrong but um a lot of this planning and and managing all these diverse habitats requires a lot of collaboration with a lot of people so you know there's a, a big teamwork aspect there as well absolutely yep uh, i work quite a bit here in the region with uh both the the regional biologists and also the the, the regional uh land managers okay um, so we all kind of have our own area of expertise right and you know we kind of get together and come up with solutions to you know habitat problems okay and, you know so yeah work quite a bit with other folks yeah it makes sense and uh, yeah th that's uh, probably something that I would enjoy if I was in that field um, so my next question is if I'm a college student looking to graduate soon is there sort of a entry-level position or salary that I should sort of look for if I'm looking to get into the forestry field well, specifically within the game commission right now, uh, most folks are starting at the forest technician position. Okay. So that is a, uh, currently it's a three-year limited term position. Uh, and that starts out of around $44,000 okay. a year. Uh, that requires an associate's degree um, for to, to get that position. So that's, uh, it's it's more, like I, I said earlier, it's it's, pretty specific you're out in the woods doing the field work um, so you know rain snow I mean we they do some inside stuff but it's 90 some percent outside so if that's what you're into that's I mean it's, it's a great job yeah sure. uh, I mean if you want to get paid to walk around the woods and count trees there you go yeah that's what you want to do <laughs> okay yes so is there then um, you mentioned forest technicians and you're like a field forester, but are there maybe opportunities for advancement sort of above your position? Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, if if the, the Pennsylvania, specific to the Game, the game Commission, mm -hmm. uh, if you're just looking to get promoted and make a lot of money, the Game Commission may not be where you want to be a forester. Okay. Um, not like you're anybody's going to make a whole lot of money in forestry. But right. Uh, You're not getting like a private jet, you know, like no. the year, first year working there. Okay, all right, <laughs> no. darn. No, uh, but uh, but there is op some opportunity for advancement. Uh, okay. So yeah, so there's basically within the region there's four levels. Uh, I talked about the forest technician. Mm -hmm. I'm a field forester. Then my supervisor would be the assistant regional forester, and then there's a regional forester. So there is some opportunity. Okay. Uh, so j most people are starting out at the. Uh, forest technician right. level with an associate's degree 
you can then apply for a field forester position if you have uh, an associate's degree plus several years of experience. Gotcha. Or if you want to start out as a field forester, uh, you need a bachelor's degree. Okay. So then my last question for you is, do you have any advice for students that are looking to get in the field, you know, any volunteer opportunities or maybe internships that would be available for them? Yes, uh, absolutely. So experience, you know, I've been on interviews for forest technicians, interviews for uh, internships, and experience, any kind of experience, any kind of related experience, mm -hmm. natural resource, anything. Okay. Uh, so it can be, you know, it could be bird surveys, it could be plant surveys, it could be planting trees, it could be, you know, controlling invasive species, it could be, you know, anything wildlife or uh, forestry related. Really. Okay. Um, is, is, is huge. So, you know, if there's like organizations within, I know like when I was a student, I was uh, involved in uh, the Penn State chapter of Society of American Farms. Okay. Yep. You know, getting involved in groups like that, just, just right. getting involved, uh, it's very important because not only do you gain experience, you also gain content. Mm -hmm. You get to know people, Yep. Um, which is, is very important because right now forestry uh, within the state of Pennsylvania, there's it's pretty easy to get a job. Um, if uh, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of jobs out there. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the there's probably people. the DCNR has foresters. Exactly. Um, there's other either nonprofit organizations or state agencies yes. that employ them. So there's there's a lot of job opportunities out there right now. Um, so you know, getting to know those people that are hiring is, right. is goes a long way. So makes sense. Cool. Well, thank you for letting us ask these questions about your job in the field of forestry. I'm going to put you on the spot now. We're going to take you over a tree and have you kind of point out some things, maybe identify what species it is, maybe say what it's good for in terms of habitat and all that, and test your skills and knowledge. All right, we call that stump of the forester. Uh-oh, all right, let's go see how you do. <laughs> all, right. all right, Andy, so we got a tree for you here. Um, tell me what species it is, and then maybe just some facts about habitat, uh, what habitat it provides, or maybe if you're out in the field as a forester and you're doing a wildlife, uh, or a habitat improvement cut, what you would what you do with some of these trees of this species. All right, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, a yellow poplar, also known as tulip poplar. Yeah, there's a, a leaf. Uh, we're here in November, so it's dropped most of its leaves. Uh, you can still see uh, it's a, what we call a light seeded species. So um, it produces seeds that are pretty small. Um, uh, it, there is some wildlife value to the seed. Uh, I know turkeys like them. I'm sure like, you know, mice and things like that, chipmunks would utilize them. Um, but uh, they don't have the, the big seed, you know, like a, like a walnut or an oak or an hickory. Right. Uh, so there is some value with the, uh, the, the seed that it produces. Um, it's generally a, <clears throat> a tree that, that grows on pretty good sites. Um, uh, it's, it's native to Pennsylvania, uh, native to the southeastern part of Pennsylvania. <clears throat> It grows really fast. Yeah, I always uh, notice really big trees of this species whenever I see them. Yes, because they, they, they grow really fast. Okay. Um, it's actually one of uh, the few natives that trees that we have that can compete with non-native trees. So nice. You know, huh. there's we spend a lot of time fighting non-native invasive tree species mm -hmm. like Alanthus, uh, Tree of Heaven, or a Princess Tree, Royal Polonia. Yeah. Those two, they both grow really fast. Um, uh, yellow poplar can compete with those. So it's a native tree that, that competes very well with non-natives. Um, from, a, from a wildlife standpoint, like I said, the, the, the seed it produces, there's some value there. Um, beyond that, it's not one of our, our best uh, tree species. So, right. uh, but one thing, one valuable habitat niche that it can provide is uh, young forest habitat. So there's certain wildlife species that need young forest habitat. Uh, so it uh, being, like I said before, a light seeded species. So, you know, the, instead of the tree, instead of investing a lot of energy into bigger seeds, right. it produces more seeds. Okay. Uh, so generally when, when we want to grow a forest quick, um, yellow poplar okay. uh, will do that for us. Um, so we can we can cut a bunch of these down, and uh, we'll get a ton of young little yellow poplars growing up in their place. So it's a really good way to create young forest. Okay. Habitat. Yeah, because I can see the seeds are falling around us right now. They're all over the ground. So you're definitely right. It produces a lot of them. So 
Okay, cool. Well, was, I think you passed the test, and uh, <laughs> thanks for sharing your knowledge with us today. We appreciate it. You bet. Thanks for watching this episode of From the Field Careers Edition. Be sure to stay tuned and keep an eye out for any future videos we have posted online. Thank you.